everyone, welcome back to the thesis workshop and this is uh, my tutorial number two. And this is when we will begin our eight practices. So what I would like to um, first of all set up is uh, three sample topics that I am giving you uh, that you can use for this workshop. So here are the sample topics that you can select. Number one, is a college degree necessary for success? Number two, argue whether or not online dating is a good way of forming meaningful relationships. And number three, should underage adolescents be allowed to have cosmetic surgery without parental consent? And just to clarify, underage adolescents would be under the age of 18. So what I would like you to do is copy paste or just type out which of these topics you will be focusing on for the remainder of this workshop. So for example, if you like number one the most is college degree necessary for success, you are going to open up your Google Docs page and at the top write this question down. This will be a constant reminder of the topic that you will be exploring for your uh, thesis workshop. So once you do write down the topic, just ignore the rest of these, um, but feel free, pre press pause on this video, think about which topic uh, intrigues you the most, interests you the most, and go ahead and write it on your blank page. And at that point, we will begin our practices. Here is practice one, which I'm also calling step one. Now, I gave you three different topics. Again, just a reminder, the college degree topic, the online dating topic, and the cosmetic surgery topic. What I decided to do is something completely different. I'm going to do the topic of flag burning. Um, again, it's a controversial issue, and I wanted to just kind of like, you know, do my own, just so nobody's tempted to use any of my samples. So number one is you have to brainstorm the subject. We have to start from an overview. What does brainstorm mean? Well, brainstorming is your note taking. And in order to take really good notes, you want to answer some of these questions. In fact, I'm going to ask you to answer all five questions. First question. What is the problem or the issue? Now, uh, if there's a, a subject matter, maybe the issue is very controversial. Maybe it has a bit of history behind it. Um, maybe it has different perspectives surrounding it. So you want to clarify what the problem is. Like, why are people discussing this issue? You know, why is it a problem? Why is it still controversial? And that's going to be part of your brainstorming. It's actually a very good way to begin brainstorming. Identify what it is we are arguing. Second question, how do I feel about this topic? This is an important question to ask. Sometimes we don't realize, but we have certain feelings about certain topics. And then suddenly when we're kind of forced to write about them, they surface. <laughs> So sometimes we feel very passionately, we are passionately against, we are passionately for. Sometimes we just, we feel like we don't care uh, about a certain topic, but there is a reason why we don't care. Um, some of us are very neutral, maybe because we are confused about the topic. So please explore what are some of the emotions you have about the subject matter? Why do I feel this way about the topic? Sometimes it's easy to identify and sometimes it isn't. For example, if the topic that you're, you chose is a topic you don't care about, answer this question, why don't you care about it? So that's part of it too. You know, some people feel so strongly about certain subjects and some people don't, but why don't they? That's a question worth answering. Do I have any biases about the topic? This is important. It's like, would a biased person even know that they were biased? I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, uh, sometimes when you look at yourself objectively, you realize that, oh my gosh, I may be a little biased. 
For example, let's say the subject is a, a religious argument and let's say you come from a very strict Catholic household and you have these very firm beliefs. You might not realize it, but you might be giving some of your biases in your response to the issue. So sometimes, you know, to be a good critical thinker, you want to step back and analyze whether or not you do have any biases regarding the topic. And finally, am I willing to change my mind about the topic? And this is an important one too. Can you be swayed to, to join the opposite side or are you like totally firm in your belief? So what I would like you to do is press pause on this video and go to your Google Docs page or, or your Word page Brainstorm the topic you chose by answering the five questions. Answer as honestly and objectively as you can. One more time, you have those three topics that you selected for your, your practice sample. The college degree topic, the online dating topic, and the cosmetic surgery topic. So please go ahead, complete step one, label it as step one, and answer all five questions. Next, you are ready for step two. Now, step two says explore both sides, and it's incredibly difficult to do this, but I promise you guys, once you know how to explore both sides, you basically are creating the basis for your counter argument. So my topic was on flag burning. So here's my yes side and here's my no side. And I'm now trying to think, okay, if I were going to argue that flag burning should be illegal, what are some of my reasons for why I think this way? If I was gonna argue, no, flag burning should not be legal, I mean, I'm sorry, that no, flag burning should be legal, then here are some of my reasons uh, for why I think that way. Look at my yeses. This is on, on behalf of the illegal argument. I, I can maybe say that it's not speech, that it's an action. Like I know the Constitution defends freedom of speech, but it doesn't apply to action. Um, it is unpatriotic. So, you know, I can, of course, explore that. It offends people. It can be dangerous. Like, you know, you can start an actual fire <laughs> that can spread to the building. And I could maybe argue that it's an act of violence. So, again, are all of these ideas good? Maybe not. Uh, but in order to do a brainstorming process, you want to write all of the good and bad ideas. So it doesn't matter if some of them are weak or you look at them and you're like, oh gosh, this is kind of repetitive. That's okay. Write it down. Now here's my no argument that it should remain legal. Um, it's freedom of expression. So we are allowed symbolic expression. Patriotism is not defined by a flag. I could definitely argue that. Freedom to offend is a, isn't against the law. That's a pretty good point now that I think about it. Um, it's not against the law to offend you. It can be conducted safely, like in the case of political protests. And of course, violence is between people. So me burning a flag isn't violence. You know, if I burn uh, a document, I throw it into the fire. It's not violence. I, I would like to argue that violence exists if it's between people. Once again, if you guys notice, my brainstorming, the exploration of both sides, uh, all of my ideas are not great. But that's not the point. The point isn't to, to create oh, a bunch of wonderful ideas. The point is just to get whatever we are thinking of for each side to get it on the paper. So what I would like you to do is for step two, answer the question for the topic with at least three, three reasons for yes and three reasons for no. So again, you are doing your sample with either the college degree, the online dating, um, or the cosmetic surgery topic. And you don't, I did five for each side. I would just like you to do three. If you would like to do more, please go ahead and do more. So press pause on the screen and complete step two. 
We are now ready for step three. Now we created a list and we are ready to choose our strongest reason. So step three says, from your brainstorm, choose the side and reasons you think would make the best argument. So basically step three is analyzing our list. I now have my yes and I now have my no. And I now need to take a position between the yes and no. Because again, just to remind you, we went over this in our first tutorial, a thesis statement is supposed to reflect my position. So what's my position? What do I think? I decided to argue the side that says flag burning should remain legal. And here are the two reasons that I think would be the best reasons for my argument. I would like to take the freedom of expression, the symbolic speech reason, and I would like to take the second one, patriotism is not defined by a flag. The rest, I was like, ah, eh, I don't think they're as strong. Um, again, you have a whole lot to choose from, so I would recommend you take one or two of the reasons that you came up with on either your yes side or your no side. Um, I did two reasons because I'm going to create a thesis that, that has two rationales. If you would like to create a thesis that has only one rationale, that's fine. If you wanna do two rationales just like I did, that's fine as well. So please, for step three, go ahead, press pause on the screen and write down the two reasons that you would like to explore in your sample thesis. <clears throat> All right, we are now ready to write our rough thesis. This is step four. And here are the instructions. Your rough thesis is basically your working thesis. You are answering the question without much attention given to grammar or syntax. So whenever I say, don't worry about grammar, I feel like it relaxes students so much more. Because if they don't have to worry about grammar, then all they have to worry about is just getting their sentence out um, as completely as possible. So here's my working thesis. Flag burning should remain legal because it is protected by the First Amendment and it is not unpatriotic. Now again, um, notice how <clears throat> I did not focus on grammar or syntax. There's a little bit of awkwardness in my phrasing, like it's not unpatriotic. I have a double negative. It doesn't sound wonderful, but it's still, it's just my working thesis. So I would like you to write down your thesis with your claim and your rationale as quickly and as completely as possible without any thought given to grammar or syntax. And that's what you're gonna do for step four. Go ahead, go back to your Google Docs page, write down your working thesis. If you realize that you need to do it in more than one sentence, feel free, but please do not worry about the grammar or the style of your sentence. <clears throat> We are now ready for step five, everyone. Step five is gonna be uh, a little bit harder because now we are starting to refine, which means revise, make it better, and polish our thesis. Because your thesis is the main point, it is important that it goes through a revision process. We should never just uh, write down in our essay the first thesis we came up with. If we're trying to write the best thesis possible, it's going to take time, it's going to take effort, and it's going to be a few drafts at least. So here's my first revision. And again, my, my first one was, was, you remember, it was a little bit awkward, so I revised it. Flag burning should remain legal because the First Amendment grants U.S. citizens the freedom of speech and the arguments calling flag burning unpatriotic are opinions, not facts. I eliminated the double negative. Now I'm doing this again. Despite arguments calling flag burning unpatriotic, the act should continue to be protected by our First Amendment right to free speech and free expression. And here's my third revision. 
my third revision, which I will go over in my next video. To be continued, everyone.